How's it going guys? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about ATX versus micro ATX builds or mini ITX builds in any case you want. Just basically the bigger builds versus the smaller builds of PCs and which one I specifically want to choose. Because this video is actually stemming from me just deciding do I want to keep my larger ATX build here or do I want to go down to a smaller micro or mini ITX build and kind of just create a more simple, smaller system. So currently, as you see, I have a full ATX case, but I have a micro ATX motherboard because at one point I actually decided I did want to go with a smaller system. And this is the same exact point where I was already upgrading my motherboard and CPU. So I figured this is a good time to do it. Although I did not find a case that I wanted. And by the time I had it all built, I actually kind of turned against that decision I had made to where now I'm kind of thinking I do want to keep my larger ATX build, especially because of a few things that I ran into. So let's go over the main things you want to look out for if you're deciding whether you want to go with an ATX or a micro or a mini ITX system and how to choose and which one will best suit you. Okay, so first thing we need to talk about is something that a lot of people have a misconception about and it is airflow and temperatures. Everyone seems to think that if you go from a larger ATX system down to a small micro ATX or mini ITX system that you're going to have huge issues with airflow in your system and cooling and stuff's going to overheat, which in a lot of cases, and there are plenty of videos, I'll link some in the description, this just isn't the case. There are great coolers out there that can perform whether it is a giant system like this or whether it's all nice and compact, the airflow really isn't affected as much as people might think. So actual performance isn't going to really be affected at all in this case. So that is kind of a non-contributing factor in my decision. And spoiler alert here, I am actually going to stick with a full size ATX system for a few reasons and I'm going to go through these reasons that personally is why I chose it. So one of the other reasons why you might want to choose between ATX and a smaller form factor system is just the location. So right now my PC, as you can see, is just on the side of my desk in my room, plenty of space, not in the way of anything. And I actually have it on top of a little desk kind of thing here I got on Amazon. If you are interested in these, I'll have them, I think I got them on Amazon. If I did, I'll have them linked down or I'll have something similar if you want to do a similar setup as me, because I can also store my subwoofer below them. And then I also have just extra little components or my laptop or something in the other compartment next to it. So it's kind of a nice setup I already have going for me here. So if I go down to a smaller system for one, it would probably only fit on one of these. So I have to get rid of that, which is just a pain in itself to, have to sell it or throw it away or whatever I decide to do with it. And two, I really don't need to go smaller because I have the room to go bigger. So there's no, besides visually, there's no reason for me to have to go smaller. Now, if I had to make a media PC for say the living room or say I had like a smaller room or an apartment or like a little desk I wanted to put the PC in, then I would want to probably think about going into a micro ATX or mini ITX build. So that way it could just fit more easy compactly and be out of the way of everything. And that can be a very viable option if that is your scenario, but it just wasn't for me. The second biggest concern for me was later upgrades. So graphics cards seem to be just getting larger and larger and larger as we get more and more iterations. And with the new 3000 series of RTX cards out, they are massive. So if I wanted to get a small system, I would have to make sure it is small, but big enough to where I could fit the latest graphics card in it if I wanted to. Whereas in an ATX case like this, I don't really have to worry about that at all. Unless cards get to be three feet long, I think I'll be totally fine with a full tower like this if I want to upgrade in the future. Another thing is with smaller boards, you get less ports and less expandability options. So for example, on my board right here, I only have one spot for a power source for USB 2.0. And this is the same spot that I use to power my Wi-Fi card. So I had to actually sacrifice the front IO USB 2.0 ports on my case in order to actually power my Wi-Fi card, which in the end didn't affect me at all because I rarely even use the front IO on my case anyways, but it was just something that was a little bit of a hindrance. And in the future, you know, I might actually want to use those for some reason, and I just don't have that option now. So having a large full-size ATX motherboard in the case can actually help with that. So currently I have the Corsair 750D Obsidian case here, and I was kind of thinking about switching over to the Corsair Crystal 280X. So this would be going from my full build, which was originally a full ATX build, and moving that down to a micro ATX build in this new case. And I mainly wanted to make this decision based on the looks of the case. I really liked the clean glass look of the Crystal 280X, 
But now that I have the new system built, I realize I don't actually like the look of a small computer. Like I like having a larger ATX board with the expandability options and just having it fill up a larger part of the case. So in the end, I'm actually sticking with the 750D and I'm not gonna be going to a micro ATX build. I hope this video kind of helped you guys see my thought process into what I'm doing with my build and maybe I can help you decide what you're gonna do with your next build or your current build or maybe you haven't even built it yet and you're just looking at parts to buy. But I hope this can help you decide that it really doesn't matter performance wise for your build, at least you're nothing you are gonna notice. So really you should make this decision based on visually how you like your system to be built and having a larger case honestly is easier to work in. So that is one thing to consider as well if you do edit or change stuff up in your computer a lot, or you just enjoy working on your computer, a larger case is going to be easier to work with, especially for later down the line if you wanna add new stuff to it. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise than that, check out the links in the description if you're curious about any of these stuff, if you wanna look around certain products that I have if you're curious about, and I will see you guys in the next video.